Joe DeReese and I and uh, Matt Clark often ride up to our club in Kingston together. We saw a demo up there talking about finishing and then we could ride back and I told him, well, you know, my finishing technique's a lot simpler and different than these guys, you know, and he said, oh, and they kind of liked what I had to say, so they thought maybe we should come in and talk about it, you know. And my technique is not really that much different than what, say, David Ellsworth uses when he does his stuff, because he buffs all of his stuff and so on. You know, he just doesn't try to get it right off the can perfect the first time, you know. So that's what we're going to talk about here. And this is just an example. There's two coats of finish under here. And if some of you were the Turner types, you probably looked at this up close like this and realized there's some scratches under here. And that's because I don't see them too much, because all my pieces are intended to be, you know, down here on the table. <coughs> When we look at them down here, and I think, you know, it's good enough for, I'm going to give this to somebody, it's probably not good enough for a gallery where someone's going to look at it like this, you know, and whatever, you know. But if you want to give pieces away, or if you're selling pieces, you have to have a reasonable level of, you know, of quality, but also something you can afford to sell, you know. Because it's not going to sell if you're going to charge $500. This is my steel wall, so the steel wall is going to go above 220 all right? I buff it out nice. It's going to look pretty nice in there. That's for what's the wall? It's fine. Or ultra fine, I think, is what it is these days. They don't have really have it in the synthetic steel wool. They don't have numbers on it. And I'll tell you, just because this is gray, don't think that it's the right one. Because you can make gray, brown. The colors are not universal among the companies. And it really depends on whether it's the silicone carbide or the other one. I forget the other one, what it's called. You know, but I'll give you the number of the MasterCard for the one I like, all right? But this is the ultra fine. And then beyond that, they have a whole bunch of other things. Actually, on my hand out there, there's a good page on the MasterCard. You can go look it up. It explains all the different steel, synthetic steel rolls. You know? And they buff it off, all right? The problem I've found with that is my chips end up being too big or have sharp edges or something. They always scratch my little piece in here. It kind of makes me unhappy. So I usually use a piece of rag. Now, I don't know where you're going to get this rag from because my father always goes to auctions. He brought back a big box of this about 20 years ago, and I still don't have not gone through all, you know. <laughs> but anyway, this is some synthetic cotton mix or something, and it works really well from buffing. But I think if you probably went to the store, and get one of those shop towels or something like that, it would work just as well. So now I'm going to buff this up. So the idea here is two things for what I'm going to paint. I want the wood to be slightly sealed by the buffing so that it won't take the paint so much, right? And I also want this to have a really nice finish on it because I'm not going to have a really nice finish on my paint if I don't have a nice finish underneath, all right? And I'm going to talk about the same thing when I start talking about making the kind of just red here where you have a gold on the outside. And you'll notice in the past I've always told you to burn a line in here or something and then paint up the line, all right? But then I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Let's see if this is on the camera. Today I'm going to do this a little bit differently in that I'm going to paint right. Camera just went off here. Right? I'm going to paint right up to this line right in here from both sides and come in. And in order to get this to blend in here, I need to have this still wet, all right, and have the proper viscosity when I come in here. So when I actually do the painting, you're going to see me start in the middle and move out towards the outside. But actually, I'm going to start right here in this touch section right in here, move in this way, move in this way, and bring it out until I get the viscosity just right and these two lines actually merge together right here where you can see the red and gold. And I'm going to pass this around in a second, all right? All right? And I suspect this is also going to be a little bit too dry, but it's going to be better. I use different colors for these just so we can see which one is which. I put this one on. And you can see that that's a lot better. Remember what I was talking to you about before is that when I put the paint down here and then it comes around, and when it comes back on itself, it actually is still wet, right? So now it'll spread out, all right? So we understand that, but we still see in here that it's not really painting on really beautifully, all right? And I'm going to show you how to fix that in a second. But I also want to show some of these other ones because people always ask me about these. Let's use this airbrush one. I think if I can stick this up here under the camera, you can see that when I move that airbrush one, which is this, this color right here, this, this one, you see how it moves around? It's very thin, all right? Compared to this red one next to it, which is just sitting there. It's not, it's not moving, right? And when I paint this on here, the 
put those on pretty nice, but they actually didn't get enough paint on the brush. And the reason I didn't get enough paint on the brush is I didn't want to paint these guys in front of me. <laughs> And the last one I'm going to do is the transparent. Like I said before, the transparent is even thinner than the other one. All right, so you can see that one is really water. It just rolls out of there. All right? And I'm not going to try to paint that one on there because I know what's going to happen with that. People are always concerned, oh, it's going to go across the ceiling. Well, no. If you use that transparent, it will, all right? So the red one here is almost what I want. It's, it's pretty good on this side, but on this side over here, here it's pretty good, but over here it's not so good, all right? So the problem is I need to thin out the paint a little bit on there, right? Because then I got the sealer between me and the paint. I'd rather have the paint go into the wood, you know? Because I'm going to put cheaper for sure line, though. Yeah, so I'm going so to put two coats on actually here, you know, and hope that the grain still shows through, you know? So I like to just use the first coat as the primer or as the whatever you want to call it, the sealer. Now, like I said before, I'm going to end up with some trouble with the uh, with the grain raising. All right, so I'm going to put this one on. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start in the middle of the area. I got a paint, and I'm going to move out to either side. I'm going to do the outside edge first because that's the easier edge, really. And usually on these, I usually paint like a little bit around the back side, you know, because later on, when I want to paint, I have to put the brush down because I want to. I don't want to split the brush like I was doing there. Oh, it looks like I might have got the line to go right up there without going to the small brush. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's right. I'll pass these around in a second. All right. Now he asked a good question about whether we sand on the lathe or off the lathe. This piece is oval. And believe it or not, it is really round. If we went and found a piece we stuck it in here, you actually really can see that it is round, right? It was round when I was cutting it, all right? But we know a piece like this always goes oval, and if the outsides go out, right? Where the end grain is, it goes out, and where the side grain is, it comes in a little bit, all right? So if you try to sand one of these on the lathe, even when it's perfect, man, you've got a lot of air out here, and you ain't going to be sanding it too much, all right? So I sand most of my pieces off the lathe, all right? The other thing is I turn green, and I mean really green, like these are soaking wet. And then I soak all my pieces for a couple weeks, five gallons of denatured alcohol. Then I take them out and I let them dry for a couple more weeks. And then usually I stick them in the other room and they sit in there for a few years before I decide to throw them away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like all those there, go back to the burn bin if you guys don't take them home with you, you know? So, Anyway, I then sand them out. And I usually do it all on the drill press, and there's a picture of my hand on me doing it. I mount this up on the drill press, all right? This part up here. I put my pad on there. I got my dust collector right here on the back side, and I sand these pieces, and I use both hands. And I move it around underneath of there, and I have a good old time moving it around, you know? And I like doing it that way because if I do it like this, then I got to reach out over across the front of the lathe here, and it just wears me out after a while. Whereas here, I can have this up close to my shoulders and move it around, and then it wears me out. You know? you see what you're doing. Yeah, and I can really see what I'm doing, to be honest with you. Yep. So that's why I really like to do that. A minor thing on here is if you notice in here, there's a. It's probably not going to work in the line. It's probably going to too close to me. Anyway, there's a line across here, and it's not a very hard line, or it's not a very dark line, because I, I want to be able to sand it out. But on this side, I just wrote 100 right here. And down in here, I put some pencil marks. For me, I always forget, you know, when I start sanding these things, I sand them a little ways and said, oh, I'm tired of that. I can stick it back on the shelf or something. I forget what sandpaper paper did I lay off on. Then I can start all over from scratch again, all right? So here I always mark on these days where I am. And I even forget, you know, if I just set them down here and pick another one up, I forget which ones. So I always mark it in here, 100 grit. And this line tells me I sand, I always sand around the outside first. So I'll take and sand with the sanding pad on there all the way around this on the outside first. Then I'll come in on the second layer, and then I'll do the bottom across the bottom first. You know? What order you do, it doesn't make any difference. But for me, this just tells me that I come all the way around here and I sand up this line. I did the whole thing, all right? All right, so that's why I put pencil marks in them and I write where I am, all right? 
So you can see here, and I'll pass this around in a minute, this is up to 100 grit on the outside. On the inside, I sand it all the way up to 220 grit so we can paint this one. All right? So I'll sand the whole thing out to 220 grit, and I go through the grits. And that's another reason why I like this system of the pads, because I can just pop them right off here and go through what I want and have them written on here what they are. 80, 120, 150, 180, you know? And I see, and usually I start with this 80 grit when people are like, do you start with 80 grit? Yeah, because I'm lazy. I don't, I don't like to spend any longer than I have to. Get all of it sanded out on the first down to 80 grit, you know, and get all the lines and all the stuff out of there, you know? And then move on to the next grit, you know? And I actually think I have a raw one here. You can see this is usually what I start with. I'll pass this right now. There's a few lines on here. You know, this is what I usually start with, and I'll pass the sanded one in a second. All right. Yeah, you do it all power sanding, you never do hand sanding. I only hand sand the last part. The very last, I'll talk about that in a second. So I'll sand with 80, 